Hey gamers, this is Duke and today I'm going to be discussing the recent changes to the Skolas fight in the level 35 Prison of Elders. As you probably know, Bungie released an update on June 15th that made significant changes to round 6 of the Skolas fight. First, they removed all burn modifiers. In the first 4 weeks, round 6 always featured a burn modifier. From now on, there will be 2 modifiers, but there won't be a burn. Secondly, in order to compensate for the lack of burn modifiers, Skolas' health was reduced from 27,000 to 15,000, which is a significant decrease. Finally, enemy spawns are now based on Skolas' health instead of a timer. The effect of these changes is that Skolas is much easier to kill. With the burn zone, it was almost required that you perfectly execute a particular strategy in order to win. Without the burns, you can pretty much just wing it and succeed. We defeated Skolas on the first attempt and completed the whole Prison of Elders challenge in under an hour. It was not our best effort and we made several mistakes, but we still completed it. This is a significant change because the previous weeks a mistake usually meant you had to wipe and start over. All that being said, there are some strategies from previous weeks that we used in order to help us succeed. I'm going to pass those strategies on to you in order to help you beat Skolas this week and in the future. To begin with, Defender Titans with the Helm of Saint-14 and Sunsinger Warlocks with Fireborn Active are best suited for defeating Skolas. Titans can pop a Ward of Dawn on the mines and Warlocks can respond without having to be revived which comes in handy in the Skolas fight. Also, make sure all your weapons have been ascended. Once the round starts, you can only damage Skolas by weakening the Servitor Bonds. This is done by killing one of the two white Servitors that are roaming around the right and left sides of the map. Killing the Servitors gives you about 20 seconds to damage Skolas before the Bonds are re-established and he begins taking only minute amounts of damage. Once Skolas' health gets to about 75%, the Servitor Bonds are broken completely and there's no longer need to kill the Servitors. If you don't get his health down to 75%, after killing the first server, go to the other side of the map, kill the server, and try again. But don't kill the server unless you can see Skolas, otherwise you're just going to waste time trying to find him and time will run out before you can do any damage to him. Now we typically go to the left side of the map, kill the server, and then begin damaging Skolas. It's best to do as much damage as you can at the beginning before the enemies and mines begin to spawn. That way you can focus all your attention on him. I do not recommend using a weapons of light bubble. Uh, some people will suggest that you use that, but I don't because it tends to draw Skolas in more quickly. And uh, you can see that at the beginning of the video where he just comes straight at us. Not long after you break the Servitor Bonds, mines will spawn and one member of the fire team will be burdened with Devouring Essence. For those of you who haven't played Skolas' Revenge before, Devouring Essence poisons one player and automatically kills him after 30 seconds if it isn't passed to another player. Another player can grab it by getting close to the poison player and holding down square on the PlayStation. Once it's passed to another player, the player it has passed from is immune for 40 seconds, meaning it can't be passed back to that player during that time. If the player who is poisoned dies, Devouring Essence will randomly be assigned to one of the remaining players. Devouring Essence despawns once you kill Skolas. Now handling Devour Essence requires good communication and awareness. Now because the player most recently poisoned is immune for 40 seconds, Devouring Essence must be passed in a rotation. The person poisoned needs to be aware of his timer and the next person in the rotation needs to be near that person ready to grab it with about 5 seconds left. Once the mines spawn, they need to become your primary focus. You can kill Skolas later, but if you fail to dismantle the mines, it's a wipe. We typically send one person to take out the mines on the right and middle side of the map, while the other two remain on the left side. Keep in mind that the person venturing out to the other side of the map cannot be poisoned, because then there's nobody to pass Devouring Essence to. Usually we send a Warlock, that way if he dies, he can always self-resurrect if needed. For the two players remaining on the left side of the map, they usually still have to contend with Skolas, who has been drawn over there because that's where we usually shoot him from. It's important that the player who is about to take Devouring Essence not die, because if he does, the other player has nobody to pass it to, and he will die also. 
Once you take care of the first round of mines, focus on the other enemies and just ignore Skolas. Since enemy spawns are now based on Skolas' health, not a timer, it's best to kill these enemies first so you can devote your attention to Skolas before the next wave of enemies and mines spawn. This strategy can be used at several points during the fight as long as the mines aren't active. Kill all the enemies, then focus on Skolas, so there's less to contend with. You can take your time because more enemies won't spawn as long as you aren't damaging Skolas. If you kill Skolas before the second round of mines, the enemies will despawn, but you still have to finish the second round of mines to complete the round. Most of the damage we did to Skolas was caused by Yalahorn. Tracking rocket launchers are very effective because you can fire quickly and then duck back behind cover. You may notice during the video that heavy ammo is lying around everywhere. That isn't a coincidence. Rounds 4 and 5 also take place in the Fallen Room and they feature the modifiers Specialist and Small Arms respectively. As a result, I try to avoid using my heavy weapon so that heavy ammo packs will be spread out around the room. As long as your team doesn't completely wipe at some point, those ammo drops from previous rounds will remain in the room. And then you can take advantage of those during the Skolas fight and you'll have plenty of heavy ammo. As you can see from our sloppy gameplay, defeating Skolas is much easier now. There's much less need for precision strategy, but the strategies I described will certainly make things easier. If you failed to beat Skolas before, I suggest trying again and following these strategies. Remember, it's okay to take your time because your enemy spawns are based on Skolas' health, not a timer. If at any point you start getting overwhelmed, just rotate to the other side of the room, away from Skolas, and focus on getting rid of the other enemies. Also, mines and devouring essence need to be a priority once they spawn, and no matter what, you will have to take care of two rounds of mines even if you kill Skolas first, so don't celebrate too early. That's all I have for you today. I hope this video helps you take down Skolas. Feel free to comment with any questions you may have, and I'll try to get back to you. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my page. Also, shout out to Zarin and Archangel of Chaos for helping me complete Skolas' Revenge this week. Uh, remember to check out Archangel of Chaos' page on YouTube. Until next time, gamers, see you later.
victory.